In today's Hard Money Minute, I'm going to jump into a request that I had on Facebook yesterday to give an example of a Burr type investment using hard money. So today's Hard Money Minute is all about investing using hard money in Burr type investments. So um, first and foremost, let's take a, a look at what a Burr investment looks like, what it means, and uh, you know how you can implement it. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to be using a couple different screens here uh, to create some visual aids. So bear with me. All right. So what is a Burr investment? Burr stands for buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and then repeat. The idea is to purchase a, an investment property um, using some financing and some of your own cash, renovate it, rent it out, refinance it, and get your money back, and then maybe some, and then maybe some more, right? And then repeat this over and over and over and over again. It's a way for you to take a limited amount of capital, maybe you have $20,000, $50,000, $100,000, and build it into a rental portfolio that is worth hundreds of thousands or, or millions of dollars over the, the course of a, uh, you know, a period of time. So let's jump in here and take a look at, um, at what each of these look like. All right. So first and foremost, let's let's use a sample property. Let's pretend that we are buying a, a property for $100,000. We're able to go out and get a property under contract for hundred grand. It needs $50,000 in renovation, which is pretty extensive. When we buy it, there's going to be some finance costs since we're using uh, our money um, to, to finance the, the purchase and renovation of the property. And there's going to be some closing costs. So the total investment cost of the property is $162,000. Now this property, once it's done, it's going to be worth, it's going to have an after repair value of $225,000, which not insignificant. We're right there at that 65% number. And uh, it's pretty nice, pretty nice deal, right? We're, uh, as uh, your hard money lender, they come out and they say, all right, look, we are going to fund 125,000 towards this purchase, which is going to end up being 75,000 towards the purchase and 100% of the renovation costs. So the arbitrage there for the investor is going to be a total out of pocket of 37,000. That accounts for 25,000 towards the purchase and then another 12,000 in finance and closing costs on that, uh, on that project. All right. So that's buy. Next, we have renovate. Now, our scope of work is not crazy. It's a $50,000 budget, so it's not nothing, but it's also, um, you know, not a, a total gut rehab where we're tearing down walls and reframing the building and things like that. So this renovation includes some demolition. It's going to include a new roof, some drywall repairs throughout the property. We're going to put in a new kitchen, two new bathrooms, some flooring. We're going to paint the place. And then we're going to do some finish work, some baseboards and trim and, you know, a little fix up here and there, maybe a door here or there. And we're also going to do, uh, I, I always include a punch list and contingency in my budget just to make sure if you watched the video earlier this week, just to make sure that I'm able to hit my numbers because with any renovation, there's going to be some unexpected expenses, right? So here's our $50,000 budget. We go in, we renovate the thing. Got a great contractor. He gets in demos the place, puts on a roof, does the drywall repair, goes through. And at the end of the job, we come in right on budget. There was $5,000 in overages. Um, you know, the, the bathtub that we wanted was a little bit more expensive and we had to do some unexpected electrical work, but it's going to cost us 50 grand. Great. Next, it's time to rent. Anytime you're, you're putting out a rental ad, anytime you're looking for a tenant, we want to make this look as, um, as beautiful as we can as attractive as we can. Right now, the rental market's super hot. There's not a lot of rentals because of the uh, you know COVID buying spree that went on over the last year. A lot of uh, landlords, they put their property up for sale. And so we've got fewer rental properties and there's a, a big demand for nice ones. We wanna make it look as nice as we can, get the most um, number of applications and choose the best tenant. So I'm gonna start with a good headline, gorgeous three bedroom, two bath for rent. Eh, you know, hey, if, if you've got a location, if you've got uh, you know, some distinguishing characteristics that are attractive, this is a good place to put them in. Um, next, we're gonna follow up with a description, renovated single family home in a great neighborhood. You'll fall in love with the kitchen and tile bathrooms, spacious interior, the great, it, you know, this spacious interior is great for families or couples. The rear yard is a great place to enjoy some cool autumn evenings available September 1st. Awesome. Now we have details. 
one month security deposit and first month's rent due at the lease signing, not at the move in, at the lease signing, right? Additionally, there's a pet de uh, deposit required, small dogs only. If you accept cats or gerbils or snakes or whatever you're going to, you will accept, you might want to put it in the, in the ad in the details. Rent here is $22.50 per month. We're assuming a 1%, a 1 rule where the value of the property is $225,000. We're going to rent it for 1% of that, $22.50 a month. There's a $50 application fee. Don't forget the application fee. You know, if you can pull credit and you can do your background screening and select a tenant for nothing, great. Maybe you don't have to have the application fee. But we want people to have some skin in the game here. We want them to commit to the property. $50 is not an exorbitant amount of money, and it'll at least get us some activity and know whether the people are serious or not. Great. Next, we want contact details. Make it easy. Make it easy for them to contact you for further information. They shouldn't be contacting you for an open house or when they can see the property or anything like that because that, that, that information is at the bottom of the ad. You want to give them a, a phone number and an email. May, an email is fine if you don't want to give out your phone number. But regardless, we want to field calls and field inquiries and let people know, hey, we're having an open house. Don't show a property one off. It's a bad idea. You want to meet them at the property, number one. And when you meet them there, you want to make sure that they're not the only one showing up. So hold an open house either an hour or two during the week. Um, in the mornings and in the evenings, it allows people that work different shifts and work at different times to get out to the property, see it. And if they like it, they can fill out an application and move forward with the, with the rental. Now we have a tenant. Next, we're going to refinance. The refinance, well, let, let's take a look at the overview of, this, uh, of the financials on this project because we're, we're going to assume that on this project, project, we're going to pay 4.5% um, for a 30-year fixed uh, mortgage. This could be a commercial or it could be a residential, um, uh, excuse me, a residential investment property loan, but that's what we're going to assume on these numbers. Again, an overview, purchase price, 100 grand, 12,000 in, in closing and finance costs, 50,000 in renovation brings our total acquisition to $162,000. Annual rental income here, 2250 times 12 is $27,000. Now we can't assume that this thing's always going to be occupied. So, we're going to we're going to assume that one month a year we're going to have a turnover and the tenant leaves. Now look, whether that happens or not, we're going to build it into our numbers because maybe the tenant stays for 5 years. But maybe they also leave it and we got to do a major renovation in five years. So in that case, we want to have enough room so that we can get in, renovate the place and get it back on the market. Should it take five months? Sure shouldn't. But who knows? All right. So we're, we're building that in. Our adjusted annual rent now is $24,750. Now let's look at the expenses. We've got our insurance, taxes, management, maintenance, a reserve, a capex, and you'll notice here that I do not have um, uh, utilities built in here. Utilities are something that the tenants should take care of. The, um, the reserve and this maintenance expense, like we just renovated the property. Things are going to pop up throughout the course of, of a tenancy. But the few dollars that we're going to spend on the, um, the utilities during the time that it's vacant, it's negligible. I mean, you may be talking a hundred or two hundred dollars. If you want to make an adjustment in your calculations, that's fine. But in this case, I've got total expenses here of eleven thousand six hundred nine. You want to make sure that we're building in not just taxes and insurance here. Even if you're managing this property yourself, you want to build a build in a management fee because your time is not free. In addition, at some point as your portfolio grows, you're going to want to hand this off to a property manager so that you don't have to get your hands dirty. You're going to, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. Maintenance, you're going to have some maintenance. Build in 5% to start, and you can make adjustments as time goes on. Reserves of 5%. Again, we don't know exactly how much our maintenance is going to be until we've got a tenant in there and we can kind of gauge from there. So build in that reserve. And then CapEx is, a, is capital expenditures. As a, for, this is a, uh, a money that's set aside for replacement costs of things in the home let's say a heater, an entire new heating system will cost you $15,000 and it's got a 
reasonable life of 30 years. These are round numbers. Well, the CapEx expense for that heating system is $500 a year. So we put that aside. If you continue to do this year after year, when it's time to replace the roof again, when it's time to put in new windows, when it's time to put in new flooring, you're going to have money set aside specifically to update the property so that you can maintain the value and make it attractive for tenants in years to come. Last, let's take a look at the finance terms. We refinance this thing. It's going to cost us a point and a half to um, originate and go through closing. And then we're going to have um, we're going to have principal and interest payments that equal $10,944 a year. It comes to $912 a month. Guess what, guys? Now we're in a great situation. We've got the house refinanced to long term, low cost financing for the next 30 years, during which time we got a tenant paying the rent. And we're assuming that even after all of our expenses, even after our vacancy, even after some surprise expenses, we still have money left over. And now it's time to repeat. This is a financial recap so we get an idea. We took out a loan here of 80% of the after repair value or the, the uh, value of the property once all the renovations are done. We assumed that to be $225,000. 80% of that is $180,000. Next, we've got our, our expenses. Including the, the cost to refinance the loan, we've got costs of $165,375. What this means to you is that as you refinance the property, you get to put the almost $15,000 in your pocket. And we've got an annual revenue of $24,750. We've got annual expenses of $11,609. So our net operating income here is going to be $13,141. That's a cap rate of almost 8%. And in an area where you have a $225,000 home value, that's not a bad cap rate. Annual cash flow is only $2,000 about $2,200 a month. What's that mean? It's going to be just under $200 a month. Um, I, I'm sorry, $2,200 a year. So that's just under $200 a month. But this is after all of our expenses. It's after our man, someone else managing the property, someone else um, taking care of maintenance. This is somebody else you know, putting money aside in reserves, putting money aside for capital expenditures. So even after all of those expenses, we're still making just under $200 a month. Here's the beautiful part. Remember we put that $15,000 in our pocket at the refinance? Well, that, may, that means we have $0. In fact, minus $15,000 left in the property of our own capital. The cash on cash return here becomes infinite. And this becomes the type of property that we can invest in over and over and over and over again. Burr investments have become really, really attractive. They're hard to find, but when you find them, hard money is a great way to finance the acquisition and construction, to speed the process along and take a few thousand dollars and transition it into a multi-million dollar real estate por portfolio. That's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for joining me for this Hard Money Minute. Until I see you again, go make some money and I'll talk to you soon.